Hey, what's up guys? My name is Boda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be doing an update video to that initial overview video we did of the Antminer DR7, that SCP ASIC. Going to kind of go over the aftermath, essentially. We've seen what happened now, how it affected the hash rate, how it affected the yield, how it affected the profitability. We do have a more complete picture, so we're going to talk about all that good stuff because there still is a lot of misinformation when you try to research this thing. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the liquidity. There's a lot of things we kind of discovered along the way, so we'll kind of keep updated and kind of make the decision if this thing was a flop or not, right? Which in some cases, I know some of you guys already have that, <laughs> that thought, but we'll talk about why there's still potential here. Okay, so there's a difference between like a true flop and one that's never going to recover and kind of what's going on here, right? So we'll talk about our thoughts as a whole here and if it can still make sense, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. Let's get to this thing. So there was a whole lot of misinformation with this thing, and that's what kind of got a lot of people wrecked. Okay, we did our best to try to put a video out quickly to kind of like dispel a lot of that misinformation. We tried like tweeting at like Mind the ASIC. We tried getting at people for them to correct this info. And they kind of did on certain aspects, but not enough. Not enough was done. So kind of a crappy situation. So a lot of people were expecting certain things. But again, this is why you have to research your thing. You have to look into things. Um, shout out to SCP's Discord because they kept it real in there for anybody who did go in there. A lot of good info. They kept it real right from the get go. And they kind of set expectations. So shout out to the community. Shout out to them for being in line with everything. Okay. So this one kind of came out of left field, kind of weren't expecting this one. Again, we had mentioned that WDMS, they actually did kind of ex hint extremely hard that one was coming, it did get announced shortly after. Again, even with them mentioning that, I was like, ah, maybe down the road, but no, they, <laughs> they definitely did come out. So the hard part here was just the misinformation to me that was the biggest thing everybody just assuming because it's scp that it was going to be a sia coin asic which it was not they were completely changing algos and that was the purpose of this release okay so the problem was the profit calculators showing a incorrect stat okay in this case they did update this to at least blake 256 r14 but this is still totally wrong Okay, and this is like a month later now, and it's still completely incorrect. And this is what kind of led to a lot of this misinformation. A lot of people just immediately saw this. or like, oh, man, pre-ordered, not kind of knowing what they got themselves into. Okay. So did it eventually pan out? Duh. Nowhere near this thing, obviously. Obviously, if you were the first person to get one, your yield was good prior to the units coming online. But it was just going to be one of those scenarios where the hash rate and difficulty was going to go up monumentally and it did right so essentially just wrecking the rewards and wrecking the profitability based on today's current profits okay and that's what we were kind of hinting before with the other video is that it was kind of like a lotto play essentially saying that it's a spec play okay may not be the most profitable thing but speculation wise there are reasons why this thing could still do well okay but as we look at what ended up happening, right? So obviously, definitely not making this kind of profitability now, now that the first batch is completely out. And we saw the effects that it had to the hash rate, which was kind of what we were expecting, right? So essentially, we were at about one and a half petahash or so and skyrocketed. Now it's in the 20s, about 20, 21 petahash. Okay, so about a, like a 13x increase in hash rate, which means what? Th an extreme reduction in your overall rewards okay so it just got wrecked right in that capacity but again this is something that was somewhat known we didn't know to what extent right we don't know how many units were going to be released it's going to be a tiny batch of like 50 units we had no idea okay so this was the big variable and it's going to be the big variable as we've seen with like these other asics as they come online to these immature networks right because there's just not that much hash rate so again once it starts out and there is a relatively big asic of course it's going to devastate the network okay so again as we look at it so if we go on mining pool stats it's only showing dxpool.com and it does seem like they are the biggest one right now so it seems like my amp pool hasn't officially put their pool up yet which hopefully they do soon that way we can kind of spread this out a little bit um, it's showing that the block distribution is about 81% for DX pool. 
11% for SE prime pool, and then 7.2% unknown. Okay, so as we look at the, all the recent blocks, though, it's all freaking DX pool right now. Okay, so hopefully we do get some more pools going. At least and pool that we kind of spread up the hash a little bit, right? But you can see the, the extent of everything. We kind of get a ballpark. It's showing uh, 185 miners. And kind of see the batch size, probably about 200 or so, because there's still some that are in transit, some that are still going out. But it does seem like most likely this is going to be the only batch, at least for the foreseeable future, right? Very similar to like what happened with Handshake. Kind of did that initial batch, kind of spread out a little bit, and that was kind of it for like a good while, right? So kind of mentioned that comparison, and it's kind of very similar thing, very really similar situation where it's, it's highly speculative, right? But again, the hash rate just affected the yield and the returns and everything. So we'll look at profitability here in a second. So shout out to Mining Now, though. They were the only one who, right off the rip, actually had it somewhat accurate. Okay, and even currently, it's still kind of there. They have it as making about $2 a day currently. Currently, right now, SAP is actually having a little pump, oddly enough. But you can kind of see here just to get a more realistic picture of what it is. So as we dig in a little bit deeper, of course, Mind the ASIC has it as number one, actually, oddly enough. So that is incorrect. So one thing we did learn actually since the last video was that, again, that was a big complaint initially was the fact of liquidity, right? It was essentially just trade ogre, extremely low volume, nothing there. So it is on Solana. So all the liquidity is actually on Solana. Okay, so if you are interested in one of these things, you want to go on birdeye.so or any of the, the Sol charts and look up the coin and that way you can really get a feel for the actual volume. Okay, so it's actually the 24 hour volume is about 171,000. Okay, so drastically different from what we initially thought. So if you're interested, if you want to buy any, or if you're going to have this ASIC and you want to see where to sell, it's definitely on Solana. That is 100% where all the liquidity currently is. And CoinGecko did actually update this as well. So when you go on CoinGecko, you go to markets it does actually show the dexes on here now which wasn't the case the last time right so pretty cool there now we have more of a ballpark but just keep in mind it's going to be all over the place because like currently they have it listed as being like about 36 cents it did have a little pump but not to that extent okay so i think what's throwing it off is the api or something with orca orca has it at 51 cents versus all the others are anywhere from like 18 to like 22 cents okay which is more in line where the current price is so if you go like on any of these swaps you can kind of get an idea so you can see here currently it's about 24 25 cents so it did still have a nice little pump from being in the teens to being in this range now okay so that definitely helps out with the profitability and that's part of the reason that it's showing some profit now versus being at a slight loss or break even okay so there is actually a little calculator i'll put a link to it in the description and this is probably the most accurate one actually so in this case you can kind of see it already has the specs and everything kind of pre-filled in and at the time the advantage was you can kind of put in a guesstimate as to how many units you think we're going to come online right obviously now we have a better idea because that first batch is out so it's not something you got to mess around with but it does have the current network hash rate already take into account the 20 petahash you could put in the coin price. You, of course, you can like put it up and down just to kind of mess around with it. And you can see here how much SCP you would gain, the actual USD value, your electric based off of your electric rate, which in this case we put it as a 10 cent. So current profit is about two bucks. And that does put it in line. Well, actually, money now has a 384. I would probably be more. This is probably a tiny bit more accurate, but it's someone that space at least it's break even or better again the goal realistically here a good thing would be break even or better this is a highly speculative one again it's a very very tiny market cap the name of the game here is going to be just basing it off of the price appreciation potential okay tiny market cap coin giggle has it ranked the top it's number 1018 okay so tiny market cap it's about it's under 20 million dollars has a lot of room to run, right? So this is the name of the game. So the fact that it's break even or better for me, that's kind of was the best case. And that's kind of what you want. So it depends on your strategy, right? If you're getting this thing with the intent of, you know, taking profits monthly to pay your electric, this is not the deal for you. And that's what we're kind of 
saying with the other one saying that's more of a like a lotto play it's just a speculation play speculation would have been a better word but essentially the name of the game here is to get that yield okay plug this thing in and just stack that scp and then wait for that price appreciation if it comes obviously it's not guaranteed but there's a lot of potential here they do have that deep in narrative they are very established it's not something that just started in the past six months so there is a lot of potential here and there is a lot of precedence we go to previous price history we can see that it has skyrocketed in the past i'm not saying i think it's going to go up anywhere near that but even if it does a fraction of that it has a ton of room to grow which in actuality it can again that deep pin narrative deep pin is going to be a huge huge narrative this bull market and this is primed for that okay in the past when they were around last bull market that was still their thing but that wasn't necessarily a buzzword or a thing versus now it definitely 100 percent is a one of the big narratives not even just a narrative it's one of the bigger narratives so does it have potential absolutely okay but again if you got this thing in the mindset that again you're going to have daily passive income anything of that sort that's not the play here okay the realistic play again is mine and hodl and then wait for that potential price appreciation and then if you want at that point what's going to happen to everything so the amount of coins you hodled those are going to appreciate a good chunk as well as the hardware and that's where the potential game changer could be okay because again it was a tiny batch i don't think it's going to be something that they're going to produce a ton of so what's going to happen the scarcity factor okay and that's kind of the same game plan that i have essentially with because again like i mentioned i have a handshake asic the hs3 same exact kind of play here so that's why for me this one is a super appealing if i didn't have the hs3 maybe i'd be more inclined to jump in but i already kind of have my super high spec asic play this is a very very similar situation okay again handshake is an even smaller market cap it's ranked number 1407 price action has been horrendous is this one gonna have the type of upside maybe right for me again it's all speculation okay this thing can either so far or well right now because of how bad it's retraced recently initially there was a point not too long ago where it did do fairly well it did go up quite a bit and at that point it did make its roi but again the name of the game for me that's why break even or better is because i'm not going to be selling now i'm not going to be selling until sometime in the bull market and that's where my concern with the price is going to be okay so my play in general not even with just this guy just all of my asics i mine and hodl everything okay so i don't realistically care too much about daily profitability i just want it to be break even or better i don't want it to be at a significant loss again if it's 10 cents 20 cents a day it's not that big of a deal but once it gets to the point where it's like a couple dollars a day loss then yes i'll unplug for a while okay and it's not that big of a deal when things return if they return then i'll be plugging back in okay but again because it's such a small market cap it doesn't take a whole lot for it to potentially moon this one is another one that again has extreme potential will it hit, hit these peaks maybe maybe not but for me it's worth the shot especially at these prices okay and then one big critique with the dr7 though i really wish it would have been a little bit more similar to the handshake asic in the sense of the wattage of the unit right it's a little bit easier to degen into this guy because the price was relatively cheap at the time still is extremely cheap right now and the wattage it being like 2000 ish a little bit under wattage it's a little easier to stomach that every month if you're just going to mine and hodl right versus the scp miner like 27 20 100 closer to like a full size a6 so it is a little little harder pill to swallow especially if you're kind of limited on electrical capacity or space and such it's just factors to kind of consider okay but for me it is the same play essentially just because handshake i mean literally it's it's the repeat of it okay same thing like even right now with its hash rate kind of peaking there's a total of only 600 units of this thing and again it was released like a year and a half ago okay so tiny tiny amount again it initially just had that initial batch profitability wasn't too great and just kind of stayed it did pump a little bit they did release another batch and that's within that new model was introduced the 8.55 and that's what's currently available and this is what's kind of caused the the hash rate to go up even though the profitability isn't too good it's just because of this price point right so 
It's a lotto play that, again, I've just been stacking, stacking for the past year and a half. Hopefully it turns into something, and if it doesn't, I think worst case scenario, I'll break even, and for me, the risk to reward is there. To me, I do see a very similar situation here. So, in total, is this thing a flop? Did, was it a horrible buy? Is it the worst thing ever? In my opinion, no. In my opinion, it is kind of doing what we expected. It is kind of doing what we hoped, and that it would just be break-even. As long as it's break-even or better, in my opinion, you're doing okay just based on the fact that potential price appreciation of the coin itself and potentially the hardware also, okay? Just because it's not going to take a whole lot for it to potentially go up pretty significantly because, again, it doesn't have to break the top 200 or even 300 or it doesn't even 500 to do extremely well from here, okay? Even just... A couple of X's, which is, has huge potential, which, like, for example, Handshake has done, right? Even just in the past few months, again, it's just it's such a tiny market cap. Again, it doesn't cost, doesn't need a whole lot. Okay, we had this run up back in February. So it's good potential here. So now, again, the thing I hear a lot, oh, it's a flop, it's a dud, it's dead. I wouldn't consider this a flop because at the end of the day, it is still the best ASIC for SCP. Where it, I would consider it a flop is if it's to the point where it's essentially never going to recoup its investment, essentially. Okay. And a situation like that would be something where you kind of overpaid for an ASIC and the bigger, better one came out and completely wrecked that one to the point where, regardless of getting a crazy price appreciation, it's probably never going to come back. Okay. Or ever be able to recoup its loss, essentially. So from that perspective, I wouldn't consider it a flop. What I would consider a flop, kind of an example of what I'm talking about now, is the situation going on with like the Alephium Asics, with specifically the little AL box, okay, coming from Gold Shell specifically, not Alephium Asic in general, specifically this unit, okay. When this unit first debuted back in April, which is again two, three months ago, $15,000 for that first batch, 15 k okay, the profitability dropped dramatically everything dropped insanely and this unit got outclassed okay like that okay to the point now where that same fifteen thousand dollar asic where a lot of people unfortunately did purchase is now 13.99 and this isn't even fair market value okay another new asic just came out with better specs at 7.99 so realistically if we were to compare spec for spec this thing should be at that price range, it should be 800 bucks, right? So from 15K down to that amount, those people who bought at that amount, they're never going to recoup that cost. Again, unless Alephium does like a 50 to 100X, it's going to be hard to recoup that amount, right? So to me, that's more of a flop because at that point, it's going to be extremely difficult for it to ever recoup that initial investment, okay? With the DR7, it's looking kind of crappy right now, but at the end of the day, if SCP moons, this unit is also going to moon. Okay, at the end of the day, it is the best ASIC for SCP. It is the only one. <laughs> but that's kind of the value proposition here, right? So for those of you who did purchase, that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. I kind of get it though, right? If you bought it with the expectation of this, just because this garbage jazz practice of not updating it, I totally get it. But at the end of the day, this is why it's important to understand the dynamics understand what's going on understand what you're getting yourself into and not just look at these stupid profit calculators like look into the coin look into the hash rate jump into the discord talk to community members because even if you don't have a good idea guess what they probably will have some pretty good insight and in this case if you and you guys went into scp's discord very good resource for a lot of the info okay so those are kind of the overall thoughts was it something i'm considering again no i already have my little lotto play in the handshake asic would it be the worst thing in the world? Would I consider if I were to find like a lowball price? Sure. Like people, somebody starts trying to panic sell on eBay and I try to lowball them for a thousand bucks. Sure, I'd pick one up. Right. But for me to purchase it right now, to me, there's a lot of other better plays. If anything, it did kind of raise awareness into SCP. Like for me, it did. Did I buy some SCP? I did. Is it one I'll slowly allocate little bits here and there? I will. Right? It does seem very interesting, does have a lot of promise. And this ASIC, in a sense, does as well. Right, But again, you have to understand the value proposition of what you're getting yourself into and kind of best strategies to be able to use that hardware to its best ability, which in this case, for me, like if I had one, 
I would just be stacking, right? Plug it in, pay the electric out of pocket, and just stack, stack, stack. Waiting for that whole full price appreciation that isn't guaranteed, but it's just things are looking pretty good, right? If it was a project that was just not too hot, but there is just potential here, right? So let me know in the comments, guys. What do you guys think? Did any of you guys pick one up? Let me know in the comments. I know some of you guys were thinking about it. Some of you guys were talking about it. But let me know if any of you guys actually did purchase, who you purchased it from, and for how much. I know prices were kind of all over the place. And I know some places also oversold, right? So they did end up canceling quite a few orders. And it's because it was in pretty much that initial batch. And that was it, right? So there wasn't a whole lot which kind of bodes well for you, for those of you who did get in this batch. Because again, if price does moon, if freaking things do start escalating quickly, then guess what? The So will the price of this unit, okay? And we kind of saw those dynamics over this past year with specific ASICs, right? That was why like the CKB, the K7 miner went from like $1,800 and people struggling to sell it to 5K overnight, okay? so. That's what you're kind of banking on here. But um, let me know in the comments, guys. What do you guys think? Did you guys learn anything? I know the the whole soul, the, all of the quitter being on soul was kind of an interesting thing. But again, let me know in the comments, guys. What do you guys think? Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching, and I am out.